once you've plotted your data, it is useful to be able to identify and recognize some patterns, some commonly observed patterns in our time series. Some of these patterns are regularly described across media, across various disciplines, and sometimes confused. So let's talk about a trend. A trend is a pattern that exists when there is a long-term increase or decrease in the data. A trend is something that is long-term, not bits that happen in the short run. A seasonal pattern exists when a series is influenced by seasonal factors. For example, quarter of the year, the summer quarter, the winter quarter, the month. For example, December contains Christmas, retail sales in Christmas. There's a are influenced by the month or day of the week. Electricity consumption of weekends versus weekdays. Everybody's at home on weekends, hence less consumption in the offices. A cycle, a cyclic pattern exists when the data exhibits rises or falls that are not of fixed period. So usually the minimum duration of these cycles are at least two years. A common cycle is the business cycle. And the, we know that the business cycles or the, the way it's defined, it varies between two and seven years or nine years. And something that we see very, very, uh, very, very identifiable as a cycle is that it is very asymmetric. Long terms of, of growth are followed by short, sharp uh, busts. Okay, so what I would encourage you to do is to not confuse these. I do not like when somebody says the seasonal cycle. Um, a season is something that repeats regularly over the year. Every, for every summer quarter, uh, ice cream consumption is very different to a winter quarter, and that's repeated year after year after year. Um, retail sales in Christmas increase year after year after year after year. Weekdays, uh, weekend consumption of ice creams, um, happen on a regular basis and they're higher than weekdays, for example. Cycles don't have this regular occurrence. Well, let's have a look at some example. Okay, there's, there's another slide on the difference between seasonal and cyclic patterns just to um, expand a little bit. So seasonal pattern have constant length, cyclic patterns have variable length. The average length of the cycle is longer than the length of seasonal pattern so as we described quarterly repeated every four months uh, sorry every four observations every four quarters um, monthly repeated every 12 observations cycles are longer two to nine years seven years the magnitude of the cycle is more variable than the magnitude of a seasonal pattern so the asymmetry that i spoke out about before here is a, an example of australian electricity production from the Oz production table. So this describes Australian electricity, uh, quarterly Australian electricity in gigawatts per hour. So um, what do we see? What features do we see from this time series? Well, the most obvious feature to see is that we have a trend, so a long-term increase in our data. We have a seasonal component, so there's regular peaks every four observations, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, an interesting feature of this is that this peak changes through the time series, and we'll see this later, especially with electricity, uh, electricity production or demand or consumption. Um, as air conditioning enters our life, our peaks goes from heating to cooling. So that we'll see that, uh, and we'll discuss this in, in subsequent sections of the book. Um, so these types of features, we identify them, we recognize them, we discuss them because we want to select models that actually can reproduce this when we generate forecasts, can capture these and reproduce them. Here is another example from the OS production table. We are filtering here the BRICS series. So this is Australian clay brick production uh, over the years. So it's again quarterly data in millions of units, millions of bricks produced. So some very strong features in this, in this time series. So for the first half, 
let's say from mid 50s to the mid 70s, there's a strong increasing trend. Lots of bricks were produced and the trend is going upwards. Then we have a big bust. So we have a recession and there's a couple of recessions in our data. There's one day and one day. These were officially declared recessions in Australia. This is in the mid seventies and the early eighties. And from there on there's increases and busts, increases and busts. Now, this is very cyclical, um, but I'm not sure that there were officially, uh, these were officially called recessions. And of course, there's a seasonal pattern to this as well. More bricks are needed in summer because it's drier and people build more houses. So the summer quarter has got a, a, a spike, it's got a peak. And the less the other quarters uh, are lower than the summer. Here is real retail, uh, retail employment. So uh, number of people employed in retail trade in the US from the US employment Sybil, and it's millions of people. So overall, we see an increase in trend, but there's um, strong season uh, there's strong seasonal patterns. There's a spike. And I bet you that spike is in the summer month for the US, this would be June, July, August for those three months. So this is monthly data. And we also see some cyclical features here where there's periods of increase and then there's a, a, a slowdown of employment of the retail employment. So there's a couple of uh, these uh, observed in, the, in this time series. This is financial data from the GAFA stock. We are looking at um, the Amazon closing stock price from 2018 onwards. And this data is, is uh, special and we'll talk about the special features of such financial data. Um, and we have what we call some wandering behavior. Uh, if some of you might have heard from for a random walk, uh, about a random walk and we'll talk about this in subsequent uh, segments of the book. Um, so we have a wandering behavior where we have some increasing and then some decreasing. And then if we keep on plotting this, you'll see various, um, you'll see that feature become um, more prominent. The last one we're gonna look at is, comes from a very famous uh, data set. Um, this, is, uh, this data set is compiled by um, the Hudson Bay Company, which is a Canadian uh, company that traded in it's been established, I think, in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, something like that. Um, and this data contains the, well, the one we're looking at is um, the Canadian lynx, a small cat, um, um, the number of trappings, annual number of trappings. So notice this data is annual. However, we see this pattern that seems to be seasonal. Hint. Annual data does not have seasonality in it. There's very few exceptions. One that I'm aware of is um, the number of Olympic records broken in annual data, which spikes every four years because uh, world records uh, that in an annual level, uh, because the Olympics happen every four years. Um, so this data though cannot be seasonal, but we see this very sort of smooth pattern so this is a clear cycle and it's sort of a life cycle of, of the links. And we'll talk about this uh, further in subsequent sections of the book. Okay, just to recap and make sure that we distinguish between what we call a season and what we call a cycle. Again, seasons have got constant length, cycles have got variable length, cycles are longer, two to five years, seasonal patterns repeat constantly in a shorter time length, year, week, even day. Electricity demand during the day has a, a specific pattern. Uh, people wake up, there's a spike. People go to work, it goes down. This is household demand. When they return, there's a spike. So even during the day, you can have some seasonal patterns. The magnitude of a cycle is more variable than the magnitude of a, of a season. And if all this doesn't sort of give it away, um, this last sentence will, so the timing of peaks and troughs is predictable for seasonal data. We know when summer comes around. We know when Christmas comes around. We know when we're going to observe a spike in ice cream consumption. We know we're gonna, where we're going to observe a spike in tourism flows, 
uh, in the Greek islands. It will happen in summer. But we don't know when cycles will turn. We don't know when we're going to have a, a spike. If we knew, we would have avoided many recessions. But obviously, we don't know when these are going to happen. Hence, um, the, the, the spikes and troughs in cycles are unpredictable.